<laughs> I'm going to talk very quickly about some alienating behaviors so that you know what they are. Right? We happen to have some fabulous researchers here in Canada, Nick Baylor, Nick Bala, and Barbara Jo Fiddler, whom I know both, and they've done some great research about what are alienating behaviors, right? So these are just, I'll go through them quickly, attributing negative qualities, limiting contact, right? Limiting symbolic contact. No, you can't have a picture of your dad here. Oh, you know, your dad's the soccer coach. Sorry, we can't put up your soccer picture. You know, things like that. Frequently calling or messaging. Oh my God, the cell phone and what's that done to this situation? You know, was is terrible, right? Because they can access them all the time. Um, giving inappropriate choices in in a proper empowerment, and that's a huge one, right? Where I mean, how many times have we heard, you know, well, he doesn't want to go, and he's 12, and I think he should choose. He's got a right to choose. And when you get the, the kids coming in, like the 10-year-olds quoting the UN convention <laughs> like, <laughs> you're going okay I think somebody's been messing around here you know <laughs> how did you find out about that oh I researched it on the internet myself <laughs> like literally this is true right you know and then it's like I have a right you know and I'm like yeah. I'm like okay let's take a look at that and what it actually says is you have a right to 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 voice you know to voice your thoughts you don't have the right necessarily to make the decision right mm -hmm. so uh, declining responsibility, the judge made me do it, having a child spy, blocking calls, taping calls, not sharing information, withdrawing approval, if the child's positive, putting the child in loyalty bind, uh, rewarding child with attention, all of those are bad things to do. But you are going to talk about some, what, what is appropriate and then we're going to go to what is inappropriate, yeah. the behaviors that tell us, okay? So it's okay for the child to be sad, it's normal. When you're going through a divorce, the kid is sad and it's okay to feel like anxious when you have to go to the other parent's house, you could favor one of the parents, you could feel frustrated and you could express that. These are all normal. They're human beings. They didn't want their parents to separate. They separate and usually they feel closer with one of the parents. But at the same time, for example, when they go to the other parents, if like they're not that close with the dad or the mom and they go to their house, mm -hmm. eventually they still spread, express love and they're still happy. But the other, I'm trying to go fast. Oh, the other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So transitions are tough, right? Yeah. And anxiety, expressing anger and frustration. But what we know, that's appropriate. It's What's, normal. It yeah. wouldn't be normal if they had no emotion. They're like, okay, I'm going there. Okay, there's a divorce. Like, oh, don't even look at me when you drop me off. Like, they're, they don't want drama. These kids are like so dramatic at these transitions. Like, that is not normal to want all that kind of negative attention in regards to your parent. It usually is, oh my God, I don't even like the shirt you're wearing. Could you wear something different, mom? Right? <laughs> you know, because they not like, oh my God, and it did go over the top with some of this stuff, so.